as quickly as we can. Um, uh, the viewer pipeline, we have, right now we have uh, a meet viewer, which uh, doesn't have very many users on it yet, and we'll probably be getting an update, uh, one, one more update. Um, we have uh, a viewer out there, the 530901 viewer that is um, essentially uh, an internal fix for changing lots of static classes into singletons that automatically shut themselves down in the right order. Very nice code improvement. Um, should we think, we hope, reduce crash on exit, um, which users mostly don't notice, but which can mess up caches and um, save setting changes and that kind of thing. Um, so we're hoping that that will go smoothly. We expect to have, I expect to have a voice viewer update again. Um, in about an hour. <laughs> the build is what I think is the final build is running now, so that'll be going through QA over the weekend. And assuming that that does well, um, that will come out on Monday. Um, the uh, there, I think that that SL voice will be compatible with other viewers. I don't know that, of course, because I haven't tested it. Um, it was not meant to have any changes that would affect viewer compatibility, um, but it has a fix for the voice activity detection problem that a lot of users have experiencing, mostly people on Macs, but some Windows users have also reported it, where if you're speaking a little too softly or if you have too long a pause in your voice or other things we haven't been able to accurately characterize uh, your voice cuts off while you're speaking and end of whatever you're saying gets chopped off um, and that's that's uh, so we think we've made that it's certainly much better on Max um, internal testing has shown that um, and we'll see whether or not it's it's better yeah uh, it, it definitely affects some people more than others. I'm not really sure whether it's differences in their vocal style or frequencies or pacing or their headset microphones or whatever it is. But anyway, it does seem to be much better on the, uh, the new one. Um, so that should be coming out uh, early next week. Um, and we'll try and push that one ahead fairly quickly. Um, it's probably higher priority than most of the other things we've got in the pipeline for near-term delivery. Um, we also still have the EAP viewer out there. Um, it may be a little while before that gets its next update uh, as we're bringing some new people onto the team for that. So, um, and it... As I'm sure you can all appreciate, it takes a little while to get up to speed on building viewers and making changes to the rendering pipeline. So um, uh, we we very much look forward to those folks getting getting uh, getting going. So uh, so that's I think. The deploy pipeline, that's the viewer pipeline for the moment. Um, and that brings us to open topics. Uh, oh, yeah, the, the Visual Studio 2017 and, X, and the next version of X, actually, it's two versions of Xcode. Um, that's coming along. I think there's a pretty good chance we'll get something for that. Um, within the next week or two, um, it's Xcode. If I, it's whatever I've got on my machine, which I can look up here. 
in just a second. It's Xcode 10.3, I think, is what we're building with right now. Or what we will be in that project, rather. Um, it, we're not making an attempt to, st we're doing our best to stay within a dot release or two of whatever the current production releases of compilers are, we are not making any attempt at all to get ahead of that curve and use the pre-release ones. So um, if you guys want to do that, more power to you. We appreciate any warnings you can, you can give us in advance, but uh, I just don't have, I don't have the time to have people working on that. Um, yeah, well, you know, what can I tell you? We're, we're having to wrestle with it. The claim has been made that VS 2017 will, or 2019 will be binary compatible with 2017. And if that turns out to be true, it will be much quicker for us to move forward because we won't have to rebuild everything. Um, we'll find out, of course, whether that really is true. Um, Um, yeah, on the Git thing, um, we are currently doing experiments with, uh, our, our intent is, is essentially that we will have done some of our internal repositories, uh, converted them from Mercurial to Git, seen that it's possible to do merges in both directions to and from forks that uh, are converted independently using the same tool. Um, and then we will document that process, including exactly what versions of everything we used to do that. Um, and at some point, we will do the conversion against viewer release and all of our internal branches. And we will be operating in Git. and you'll have to do the parallel operation. Um, like I said, we're going to try to do that for real and show that we can continue doing parallel work um, using internal repositories up to and including the one the simulator is in before we do the viewer ones because it's, it's just a little more fraught to be doing that with uh, many third-party viewers. So um, watch for a wiki page. I mean, I will certainly send an announcement both to the open source dev list and to the TPV announce list. Um, uh, you know, sometime in the next, I don't know, month or two. Um, I'm I'm doing my best not to treat this as an emergency because treating things as emergencies causes people to get sloppy, and I think this is something we want to be very, 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 very careful with. Um, I don't want to trip anybody up. Uh, we actually did do an experiment. Uh, we downloaded, we, we clone, made a clone of uh, the Firestorm repository and um, demonstrated that we can convert it and merge back and forth from it through a converted viewer release. So um, I think this is not going to be as scary as it sounded initially. Um, but we're trying to be very systematic and careful about it. Watch for news, but um, it's not anybody get hasty. Um, so, uh, right. 
so we will be we will, we'll keep you appraised of how that's going um, as we as we begin making um, well documented progress. Uh, so uh, the viewer cache and memory improvements thing is getting some attention again. Um, I don't have a. It, it's it's still a little bit too. It's getting. It's getting changes again, um, but the people who are doing that work are also doing other projects that are working their way through the deploy pipeline on internal services. So there's a little competition that's higher priority. Um, at some point pretty soon, that will be their top priority job and we'll begin making substantive progress. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that we'll, we'll get that set of changes done. Oh, there's one other thing I, I really wanted to make sure I mentioned about the voice viewer release. It's a it's a minor, it's a pretty minor change, but it may trip you up a little bit, trip up developers a little bit. Um, in the course of doing the voice changes, I have the some of the libraries changed, and I happened to stumble across the fact that the viewer manifest.py script that actually assembles the installers. Um, did not treat a missing library as a, a missing artifact file, whatever it is, um, as an error. So if the manifest listing said, copy this library into the installer, and that library wasn't there, it just merrily went ahead and created an installer that was missing a library, which is means you don't detect it for a couple more hours, right? So it's a, it's a, it's a real nuisance. So I changed viewer, man, we changed viewer manifest. Um, so that it it spits out a whole bunch of errors when you when you uh, when you're missing something, uh, and then of course we had to go back and take out all the things that the manifest had been saying we should be installing in our viewers for years that in fact were never there, so or at least hadn't been there in a long time. So we cleaned up our copy. Um, if you've got features that have added stuff and then you've changed the names or taken them out and put something else in, you will probably get viewer manifest errors when you do your builds after merging that. Just a little bit of a nuisance. If it wasn't something you really needed, all you have to do is take it out of the manifest again. Um, so a um, little bit more error checking catch errors earlier in the build than so. Um, uh, I don't. I don't like it when code says you you should copy one of these and it's not there. Um, if you're using wild cards, they have to match something. Um, a wild card that doesn't match anything will also be an error. So if you're copying a directory full of stuff into your into your installer that actually doesn't have anything in it, then you'll get an error from viewer manifest. So, not something that users will care about, but it's it will be a minor annoyance for a few minutes for developers. Matt took my fix and improved it so that it spits out error messages about all the missing things at the end instead of failing at the first one. So, um, you can thank Matt for making that cycle a good deal quicker than it otherwise would have been. Um, Okay, so that's the last thing I had to remember that I was going to say. Um, any other questions that I've forgotten about? Um, oh, that's great, Kitty. We'll be glad to get that. Are you standing in for, for Worley today, Lizzie? Um, well, I don't think you're going to get them from us.
<laughs> what is this expandable IAM container? Um, well, well, don't don't compete with her time for getting emojis done. Seriously. Yeah, I want emojis first. Uh, Cinder, I vaguely recall a conversation along that line, but um, I, I don't anticipate we'll be making any changes in that regard anytime soon. We have an awful lot of infrastructure built around AutoBuild, and it's it does not count as something that's broken right now, so it doesn't need fixing.
There is an out login bug that was introduced with Bakes on Mesh, and we have that in uh, going into one of the mate viewers. I'm not sure which one, but we have a proposed fix that we hope will uh, take that out. No other hot topics this week? Uh, that is correct, Cinder. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and the real answer is um, 
if you give us a name you want to use, legal will tell us whether or not it conforms to the policy. That is not anyone else's call. So anything I say about it is advisory, but not definitive. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, we, um, Cinder, um, we have been planning on, we're talking about changing the machine ID generation. Um, so if you want to exchange some notes with me about how you've been doing it, maybe we can, we can do, uh, we can leverage what you've already done. Um, uh, there's, uh, especially in, in, in future versions of both Windows and Mac, we expect it to get more and more difficult to use Mac addresses uh, and possibly even impossible to, to reliably use them. Yeah. Yeah, so we're we're gonna we're gonna definitely need to do something different um, for that. Thank you, Cindy. That'd be great.
that, if no one has any other topics, we can all get a half hour back. And I happen to need it today. Objections? No, I'm not getting mirrors. It's not happening. All right. Bye, everybody. There was this one time I saw Oz get really mad because somebody brought up mirrors one too many times. So <laughs> just, you know, tread carefully. <laughs> yeah, I must have been having a bad day. What can I do? Just saying. <laughs> I, I mean, I think fair warning. Are, are you really sure that this is, you know, where you want to <laughs> lay down your goodwill limits? Broken mirrors are bad luck. Just think about it. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.